Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna have a sit down chat with you guys today and we are going to be talking about Tallow's birth. So if you are new around here or you are unaware, then we have a two year old son named Tallow. And obviously if you do watch our videos regularly, you will very much know who Tallow is. This video has been requested quite a lot more since I've become pregnant again. Um, I am 27 weeks pregnant, I think. Um, and so I thought that this would be a very appropriate time to share with you Tallow's birth story because soon enough, I'm gonna be sharing another little baby's birth story with you. So I thought the way that I could do this was I actually wrote down Tallow's birth story a few weeks after he was born and I used to have an old like travel blog. Um, me and Zach traveled around the world I suppose for a year together and I traveled before that before I met him and so I had a travel blog that a travel blog that I would occasionally write up blog posts on and so I'll link that down below to the original uh, <clears throat> write out of, of Tallow's birth but I've got it here up on my screen on my laptop and I thought the best way to do this would be um, to kind of go through this read through little bits of it and then talk to you talk you guys through what actually happened so I'm gonna need my glasses for that oh it is so hot today it's a really hot day but it's well into the afternoon now, so hopefully it's going to continue to cool down. I guess I'll start off by saying that Tallow was consciously conceived in India. In fact, um, we were traveling at the time and yeah, he was a little India baby. And um, I'll also say that, what else should I tell you guys? We had a pretty straightforward pregnancy and a very straightforward birth with Tal and uh, yeah, we were very sure of how we wanted it to go. We were very, very blessed to have an incredibly alternative kind of wacky out there midwife. She's actually, she's actually from England and, um, yeah, we had a home birth and we had this midwife throughout the whole time and she was present at the birth. She was our number one midwife. Um, there was one other midwife that came as well, who was really, really lovely. And yeah, we were just super, super blessed to... Um, experience our first birth um, with the support that that midwife gave us even though we are now free birthing with this child and we're having a wild pregnancy <clears throat> um, it's all a part of it so the decisions that we make in this pregnancy are not because we had you know bad care or whatever from our previous pregnancy and birth uh, but we yeah we just had I felt quite empowered having her as my midwife. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to mention that as well. So yeah, super straightforward pregnancy and birth and let's just get into it. Okay, so in this blog post, I start off by talking. So this is August the 20th, 2017 from 7 p.m. onwards. Zach is in the kitchen cooking me soup. He plans to go out to a gig close by just for a couple of hours as there is a spare ticket floating around. So the night before Tallow was born, um, Zach had just finished, finished work a day beforehand and he had just received news from his sister, I think, that <clears throat> there was a spare ticket to this gig that um, was like five minutes away from our house and she was like, do you want to go? And so Zach was quite hesitant because I think he kind of knew what was going on and he'd just finished work and he was just kind of, you know, we were in our little bubble in our apartment, but he was like, in the end, he decided, look, I'll go if you need me, just call me. And I was like, yeah, cool, no worries. He was getting ready to go to that. He was making dinner and I think I was scrolling through Instagram when I realized that there was a new vegan ice creamery just down the road <clears throat> and i was like zach we have to go to this ice cream shop like tonight and he was like well it's probably not open and i looked and it was open till 10 i think after we had dinner we before he went to this gig we went and got we went and tried this new vegan ice creamery which was 
very good. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was that. We went back to the house. Oh, sorry, my mum came with us and my mum actually dropped Zach off at the gig after we had ice cream and then she dropped me off at home and then she went home. By the way, I was 40 weeks and four days. So then I was at home and just before Zach got home, it must have been like 10 he got home, 10 at night. And um, just before he got home, I had a release of my bowels, like a complete release. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, I didn't feel sick or anything. It was just like, yeah, a flush out. And I was like, huh. And I kind of like shrugged it off. And Zach came home and we went to bed at around <clears throat> 11 at night. So now it's August 21st, 2017 from 2 a.m. onwards. So yeah, I woke up at 2 a.m. And my first real contraction tells me my baby is going to be here soon. Yeah, I wake up Zach and I tell him that I think this is the start of labor. He falls back asleep and I fall in and out of sleep until about 8 a.m. From 2 a.m. till 8 a.m. I didn't really sleep. I think the contractions were every 15 minutes from that point. And yeah, I just constantly, I'd fall asleep and then I'd wake up for the contraction and kind of just lie in bed and breathe through it and kind of roll around and then I'd fall back asleep again and so I was dozing like I was really in two worlds um, of falling in and out of sleep. So at about 8 a.m. I start humming through contractions which are about 15 minutes apart. They've been like this, oh yeah, since I first woke up at 2. I'm so tired that I sleep through most of them. I wonder why I haven't gotten up yet. <clears throat> I know that one of the best things for a laboring woman is to move around, not be still and stagnant, but the bed is heavenly and outside of my sheets seems like a foreign land I'm not yet ready for. So I remember this really clearly and I remember feeling like bed was so good and it felt like I was on a cloud. Um, and But I had this thing in my head that I had to get up because I knew that a woman in labor is probably going to benefit mostly from moving around and being active, you know, um, just like walking around the house and maybe doing some stretches or squatting and um, just kind of being up and about. And now that I think about that, because that's what I, that's the vision I had in my head and that's what I was like, well, I need to do that. Um, yeah, if I felt like in this pregnancy, when I go into labor, if I feel like bed feels really good, I'm going to stay in bed. Um, I definitely, like everything changed as soon as I got up. So I got up around 10, I think. I think Zach as well was a bit like, he, he thought the same thing or he was feeling the same thing. Like, you know, it would be really good for you to get up and move around and move your body. And so we both kind of had that on our shoulders. And so I got up at around 10 and... Yeah, yeah, I think I like immediately regretted it, but then I was like, well, I'm up now, I'm gonna stay up, so. Zach had been preparing our apartment whilst I was lying in bed. I could just hear him, like, I think he just went into a bit of like a, he didn't know what to do. Um, he put some soup on the stove so that we would have like a big pot of soup so that we'd have that later on if we needed. He was making me, I think I just wanted to eat Vegemite toast and coconut water and he was moving the furniture around. <clears throat> we were in an apartment and in the, la in the living room it was carpet and so he was putting down all of these, uh, all of the supplies that we'd gotten in case blood got anywhere all over the um, ground. Our birth pool was, um, was uh, what do you call it, like pu pumped up. And so he got it out of the spare room, put it down there and just got the hose ready and everything for when we needed to fill it. Um, so I could just hear him maneuvering around. <laughs> when I got up, I moved into the lounge room and it says in this um, blog post that for me, that's when the story starts to blur and Zach's memory come intact. And I remember this so well, like I just was not there. Like I completely went into another world and, um, as a birthing woman does. And so it, the rest of this story comes a lot from Zach and me then expressing it through words, but also, also, also of course from my memory. But um, when it's things that comes to like time and uh, 
what happened first and what happened next. Like, yeah, Zach was the one that was like, no, this happened and then that happened. So, yeah. Contractions are coming along now <clears throat> and they're getting more intense. I won't want to cover my body, but it is way too early for the birthing pool, so I opt for the shower. Once huddled on the shower floor in child's pose with the hot water falling onto my back, I feel as if this is where I must stay, but... But apparently the somewhat still respondent logical side of my brain tells me that the hot water will run out after 20 minutes and I need that. I then need that system to reheat to fill up my bath, to fill up my bath, plus my knees are starting to get sore. So yeah, I just remember being in the, in the shower of our apartment and just knowing that the water was going to run out. And also that um, my knees were so sore from being on the tiles in child's pose and I just like stayed like that for as long as until the water went cold and then I was like okay well it's got time to reheat because this baby isn't coming right this very second so yeah that was probably almost like half an hour I stayed in there back in the lounge room I huddle on the floor I can't seem to move, move much I go from squatting kneeling over the fitball to sitting and bouncing on the fitball now I think about it I owe that fitball a lot not sure what I would have done without it this is not how I would feel this is not how I felt I would feel during labour. I assumed I would be much more mobile, walking around the apartment, leaning on my partner into deep squats and practicing the pregnancy yoga I'd learnt so fluently over the past few months. But instead I hum and moan my way through each contraction on the floor in stillness, besides maybe the circling of my hips, and that started around midday and lasts through to the night. So yeah, I remember feeling like, now that I also look back on this, I think that I had a lot of resistance to I don't even know what but something there was some resistance there and that's why I was so like I couldn't move I was besides getting in the shower and then coming out and getting up from the bed like I was just still the whole time as I said I was like circling my hips from about midday and literally I did that until Taylor came out and yeah I just like I felt and I remember being in it and being like this isn't how I didn't this isn't how I thought I was gonna feel or this isn't how I thought it was gonna go I thought it'd be way more you know mobile so yeah that's interesting it's just saying here that it comes to a time in the afternoon where I start crying and all of a sudden I'm just like crying 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 um, and maybe this was like transition Maybe not, because there was still some time before Tello came out, so it couldn't have been transitioned, but it was just like a massive release, and I cried for like half an hour. I was just like sobbing over the fitball on the ground, and Zach was just kind of there, and maybe he'd like put his shoulder on me every now and then, but that was it. So then uh, after I kind of stopped... Oh, and... Zach starts to think he told me that I was feeling disheartened and that like and then I started to ask when the midwife was going to come so he called up our midwife at about 3 p.m. fills her in about our contractions about my contractions which were about seven minutes apart lasting between 20 to 30 seconds so Sarah is at our place by 3 30 p.m. and she speaks with me really softly she doesn't want to disturb um, the little laboring world that I've created for myself she tells me that she would like to examine me to see how dilated I am and I hesitantly go into the room and lay down. Um, that, yeah, her checking to see how dilated I was, this is just a part of her job, um, but that was very uncomfortable for me and it really, really hurt even though she'd do it in between the contractions. So she'd wait till the contraction would stop and then she'd kind of, you know, do what she had to do. But yeah, it was really, um, I think, disruptive so at that time when she first checked i was only two centimeters dilated and i'd been having contractions um since 2 a.m and it was 3 p.m so i was feeling pretty disheartened at that time and she was just telling me that my you know my body was doing exactly what it's supposed to do everything's going great and everything's good you know our midwife ends up leaving us for the time for that time being and um, Zach is 
to core once things are moving a bit further along. So the next two hours I just spend on the floor leaning over the bucket that we had because I was scared I was going to vomit. I never did, but I had this feeling in my throat. So I had the bucket next to me on the floor with the Fitball. And yeah. So that feeling starts to go away of me needing to vomit around 5.30 p.m. And I start telling Zach that I need to get in the water um, and I really want to get in the bath. And Zach was really hesitant to that because he knows that you can only be in the bath. Like, it's not good to go in the bath too early and he wasn't sure how far along I was and blah, blah, blah. The moaning and humming starts to become a little more and everything around me is getting quite blurry. When I look at Zach, I'm brought back to earth but only for a few moments. Sarah has been called and is on her way so she arrives at 7.30 p.m. I mumble between contractions. <laughs> I started saying that I couldn't do it. I was like I can't do this, I can't do this and Zach and my our, our midwife was just being really reassuring and Zach was being really reassuring and just saying really sweet soft things to me. So at 8 p.m. Sarah examines me examines me again and I'm five centimeters dilated and at that point I was just like oh my gosh I feel like this is never gonna end like I felt I thought that I was eight or nine centimeters dilated and I was five so I was feeling pretty disheartened at that time again once she te checked I think that her checking and telling me how far along I was like that wasn't beneficial to me but of course I had to know like you know she was checking me and so I couldn't I was like how far along I am, am I? But yeah, I feel like um, that was something that really made me disheartened and so maybe took me off the path that I was going on and which was ev and everything was fine. So anyway, yeah. Sarah tells Zach to start feeling the pool. I hold on to the water. I hold on to the sound of the kettle boiling and the water rushing through the hose from the sink to the birthing pool. It's the only thing keeping me from floating away. I'm waiting for them to tell me to get into the water. Zach gives me the okay and starts to help me get into the pool. I'm already naked. I step into the pool, Zach holding me up and then lowering me down. I sink straight down to the bottom. And yeah, I remember that feeling. It just felt so good to finally be in the pool. Like, I was like, yeah, this is where I'm meant to be. And, um, I f yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> I was just very happy about being in the pool. It felt, it, I just felt so much relief. By the way, while this was happen while this was happening, unless our midwife was checking me or helping Zach with something, she was sitting kind of back. We had pushed our table and chairs like back into one of the corners, and she was just sitting there, kind of observing and just giving us space. So I stopped, and I could hear her talking in the background really softly. I hear her talking on the phone, and um, I realised that she's talking. To the, to the other midwife and she's saying like hey you need to come now and so when I heard that I was like oh like he's it's coming the baby's coming it's it's close everything's okay our mid the, the second midwife that was coming actually lived almost an hour away and so that is why our midwife was like you need to come now because she knew that it was gonna um be soon and she had a like 50 minute drive I'm leaning over the pool and my arms are stretched out <clears throat> so I was leaning like this and I stretch out for Zach and he grabs a hold of me or I grab a hold of him more so and yeah I'm just like holding on to him as I go through everything he came really close and so I think I was even holding onto his shirt and kind of like my face was in his shirt um, through each contraction and then I'd kind of relax and I'd sink back down into the pool and then I'd grab again and I hold him to his shirt and I would like kind of bury my face into his chest and then I'd relax again. It was truly like, that was such an incredible time of birth, like the active labor and m more specifically like, yeah, the last hour or so of pushing or of him coming out was truly like, I was not there. I was in another realm and it was amazing. Um, it was truly like, the most spiritual experience I've ever had and definitely the most psychedelic experience I've ever had because I was just, yeah, off with the fairies. When a baby's like coming out or, you know, birthing itself, usually um, there's a point where the heart rate gets a little bit faster because it's a little bit stressful for them. They, you know, they've left the tummy and they're going through this like space 
and so their heart rate heart rate starts to speed up and I just remember her saying to Zach uh, wow like this is amazing your baby's heart rate has stayed the same the whole time that Nat's been in labor because um, she was checking every now and then she'd come in and just kind of put the heart rate monitor on my belly the other midwife arrives and she just really quietly comes in and she kind of sits down say like if Zach was here she just kind of sat over here on the, kind of on the other side of the pool um, closer to our other midwife and I get this urge to start pushing though I wouldn't say I pushed it was more of just like my body just like was expelling and the only way that I can um, like voice that or word that is that it was like a pushing sensation but I think definitely more of like I had this just this feeling of, yeah, like my body was just, like I wasn't in control of it. Like my body was just kind of like bearing down. And so I told my midwife that um, I needed to, I felt the urge to start pushing and she was just like, you need to do like whatever feels good for you. So if it feels good to push, then you can do that. So there comes a time when I look up at Zach and I ask him if the baby's crowning. Cause I'm like, thinking to myself surely this baby is crowning by now and I just remember like he didn't answer me he was completely silent and the midwives didn't say anything either so I was like oh my gosh he's not crowning the baby's not crowning like he's still up there <laughs> I've still got a while to go yeah so then it comes to a point where the midwives say to me Nat if you reach down you're going to be able to feel your baby's head it took all my strength to lift my ha my arm one of my arms off of like Zach and put it down it just like you know it was it was painful and it hurt a lot to kind of guide myself to do that and so I felt down and because we didn't know at the time but my waters hadn't broken um obviously and yeah he was completely intact his sack was completely intact I think it's called on call when that happens and so I felt um down there and it just felt really squishy like it didn't feel like a head it didn't feel like hair it didn't feel hard I was like this feels like jelly um and that was because the sack was yeah it was water and yeah Tallow's head at that point was almost halfway out and uh I <laughs> I went through one more contraction and um I just felt him slip out completely like in one go and just such relief came over me. I, I, yeah. So luckily the midwife was there because she caught him because um, I was holding really tightly onto Zach. So he wasn't there and he wasn't behind me and I was leaning over like this. And so, yeah, the midwife caught him and she brought him up intact, uh, completely intact. And then as he surfaced, she really gently broke the um, sack and just lifted it over his head and um, I had completely just melted down back down after he came out I was feeling such relief that I just melt back, melted back down into the water and one of the midwives said to me um, Nat if you <laughs> like if you want to just step over your over the umbilical cord then we can hand you your baby and I was kind of brought back to reality and I was like oh I just had a baby Okay, and so um, I was quite shaky, as you can imagine, um, and so Zach and one of the mid the midwife who wasn't holding tallow helped me to lift my leg up and then sink back down, and then they handed me my baby. They handed me tallow, um, and I just held him for a little bit, like he was. I was holding him like this, and then um, with his head here. And eventually I looked and I was like, I looked at Zach because Zach could, was kind of here and he was stroking Tello's head, but he couldn't see here. And so I looked at him and I said, it's a boy. Uh, I think we pretty quickly got out of the pool because um, it was feeling like it was getting cold. The water was getting cold. So yeah, <clears throat> we weren't in the pool very long, maybe five or 10 minutes. And then we got out and I went up on the couch and just rested there that we were we were both naked so we were just getting covered with um towels and then the midwife after maybe another 20 minutes so no even longer it had almost been an hour and the midwife had said to me like if you feel 
like your placenta's coming, then just let us know. We had we had the bucket ready so I could just squat over the bucket, like just kind of pivot to the edge of the um couch and yeah, get the get birth the placenta. And so once an almost an hour had passed, our midwife, you know, said, Okay, like we kinda need to get the placenta out now. I think I handed Zach tallow and I just kinda leant over, squatted over the bucket and it took like maybe 15 minutes for me to get it out because I was like, I don't feel it. Like, I don't feel like pushing. I don't, you know. Um, and then eventually I got, after squatting for a bit, I got the urge um, that it was coming and after birthing tallow, birthing a placenta. <laughs> birthing a placenta after birthing a baby is very easy. Yeah, he was born at 10.45 at night on the 21st of August, 2017. It was a very powerful new moon at that time and it was just, really really special it was honestly like the perfect birth and sometimes i wonder if i can top like if this baby can if this birth this next birth of our next baby will be even more perfect because tala's it tala's birth was just magical and amazing and i'm sure that this baby's will be just as incredible i really wanted to share that with you guys because i know that a lot of you have been asking um for this video so i'm happy that i finally am getting it out to you and yeah, we're gonna be doing more vloggy style videos over the next few weeks. Um, we've got our bus parked up at my mum's place and so we're enjoying lots of house time, which has been a nice change. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then please give us give it a thumbs up because it really helps to support our YouTube channel. Um, if you have any like general questions about Tallow's pregnancy, about Tallow's birth, then you can leave them down below. Or if you have any experiences about your own birth that you would like to share with me or with this community, then definitely leave them down below because we would love to hear about other beautiful, positive um, birthing experiences. So I'm going to leave you guys there. We'll be seeing you in the next video and I'm sending you guys so much love.